right here. We'll save the old scene. There we go. So let's go to the first person controller. Let's just hit play. Now I've added a few of the, the special effects. If we run up here, this is the lighthouse that comes with Unity 3. I believe it was in the example that's under the Pro folder. So there's your little sunbeams. It's shadow. Now I didn't bother. If you turned on dynamic shadows, you could actually see the windmill propeller turn. But I wanted to try to keep the draw calls as low as possible. So we'll go down and look at our trees. So you can see that the shadow is cast by the top of the trees, but I'm not getting any shadow from the trunks themselves. Now it could easily be a setting that I'm just missing. And I've only been playing with playing with this for about maybe three hours total, with about two hours spent on the train editing itself. Now you notice these trees are moving. That's because I've added a wind zone. So let's zoom in on that. Now you can just place this anywhere in your scene. It works like a directional light. And you can set it up. You have two modes with your wind zone. Directional and spherical. Uh, I haven't actually used spherical yet. I'm not sure. It probably has to be closer to the trees. It appears so. But you can set the... Uh, the wind main, this is basically how strong it blows the turbulence, you know, how much it swirls around, the pulse magnitude. So, not very many options here. But it does give you a bit more control over how your trees are going to move around compared to uh, the older version of Unity. I'll also make this scene available for download for Mac and Windows since you can't do a, a web build with the new Unity yet. I'm assuming they just don't want two versions of Unity web player floating around. So this is one of their skyboxes. Let's see what else it is there. I just added water, nothing special there. My directional light. Ah, sunbeams. Let's quickly go over that. It took me a bit to figure that out. So, let's go into the directional light. You notice the directional light up here shining down at my scene. And you can see my little camera. Now the sunbeams are actually going to come from your directional light. Well, let's look at the script itself. Look at the main camera. You'll have this oh, sun shaft. I, I keep calling them sunbeams. You can change the color they emit, but right here, the directional light transform. This is whatever you set here is what the beams are going to be sent from. When I first did it, I had my directional light, you know, just cranked off to the side. And when I would be running around, we'll just go up to the trees. The trees have sun shafts as well. Anything that gets in the way of it can cause sun shafts. So you can kind of see them. You gotta move around to see them. In the trees. Well, not really. The trees are swaying enough. If I would have added more wind, you would have uh, seen the shafts a bit better. But what I was getting at was my directional light was cranked off way over here somewhere off the, off the train so I didn't have to look at it. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to get these sun shafts to work. But after looking at their demo that came with it, which was under... Uh, pro example, windmill scene. Uh, did I change it? I think so. This is the one that they previewed earlier. I realized that the whatever you have set as your sun has to be in the background. Let's look at some of the other things you can have. Here's a list of all the image effects you can add. Now, if you try to add this to anything but a camera, it will add a camera to that. So if you picked a windmill, just pick the name, and you try to add one of these effects, 
it's actually going to add the camera to there as well. So just make sure you have a camera selected that you want it added to. So let's go back into our test scene. Uh, what else? Well, I could probably go on for hours in here. So I should just cut this short. I just basically want to show you how to create your train. It's pretty much the exact same as it was in Unity 2.61, with the exception of uh, your. Oh, I'm moving that all around. With the exception of uh, your light maps, which you'll be using Beast for. And it, it's pretty easy. Oh, I guess I should show you the maps over here. Uh, here is my light map for my windmill. If you look. There's the near and the far, and also for my train. And you can just load these up into Photoshop and make any edit you want. So the more objects you actually have in your game, the more light maps you're, you're going to have. And you might be wondering, I'm not sure if I explained, are the light maps, why is there two? You'll notice there's a far and a near. Up here, you have the ability to go from a single light map to a dual light map. And if you have single light map set, you're only going to get one light map for your train, one light map for, well, in this case, the lighthouse. But uh, by default, it's set to dual lights, and I just didn't change it. Now, they're called near and far, and I'm not exactly sure why. I haven't been able to find any documentation on it. I believe it has to do with how close you are to something. So if you're close to the windmill, you'll get the near light map. If you're far away from the windmill, you get the far light map. But, like I said, I'm not 100% sure. So we got the maps. Uh, that's about it. If anyone has any questions, just uh, post them on the website, and I'll be glad to go over anything that you want to see since the NDA, NDA is lifted. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.